Um, the mission of USAID is to promote and demonstrate democratic values abroad. So, ma'am, why does USAID think taxpayers should pay for a study on the intersection of gender equity and climate conflict? Um, I'm going to have to do, I'm sorry, I keep doing this, but I, I want to know more than the headline. Well, Ma'am, it's, it, it's, it's in it your be, but literature. There's a lot, there, there's a, we have a lot of literature and a lot of programs. Yes, so ma'am, but if we could follow knowing that you're specifics. coming up here to discuss this and knowing that at least my side of the aisle might be concerned about some of these things, it just seems that you all should be more prepared for this type of thing. Um, USAID seems they think it's a need, we need to accelerate the transition to renewable energy and net zero development. Why net zero development? It seems like more development, agriculture areas, people would be able to feed themselves more. So explain to that, that to me, ma'am. Well, I think we all have a responsibility to do what we can uh, to uh, try to limit the amount of warming that is going to occur, given the devastation that the current level of warning, warming is wreaking not only globally, but also here in the United States, um, as farmers can attest and as anybody who's experienced uh, one of the ever-growing number of natural disasters can attest. But putting that to one side, actually in this instance, even though there's a perception among some that we are foisting our values on others globally, the demand signal we are getting from the countries, the governments, the leaders that we engage as we think through what our broad agendas should be is that that is where they want to go. They also know uh, that renewables prices are coming way down, that they can leapfrog other stages of electrification uh, wait, 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 more easily oh, wait, wait, with solar wait, 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 and wind. Stop, stop for a second, ma'am. Leapfrog, say that again, and what does that mean? Oh, thank you. Um, sorry, jargony maybe, but um, in many of the communities we work, you can imagine there's no electricity. It can be very, very expensive and very hard to connect individuals with whom we are working to grids, which may in fact use uh, you know, be, be powered by non-renewable sources of energy. But regardless, we can't get them to the grids because it's too expensive, too hard. However, you can pop up a solar panel uh, and electrify an entire health clinic or an entire school system or university. Uh, well, I would suggest in, you, ma'am, take more than just a solar panel to no, do but that. But what I mean, you, you get the point. My point is we have been able to do off-grid electrification that we never would have thought possible 10 or 15 years ago through Power Africa and other initiatives. Is it really necessary for... An, this is in quotes, the most vulnerable populations to be focused on a net zero climate development pathway when their populations are struggling to find food. I promise you that the people who work at USAID in the field, two thirds of our staff, our nationals of the countries in which we work, care about the poverty in which communities are living and that is the animating uh, emphasis of their work and of their problem solving. As it happens, they're also watching climate havoc drive people into poverty who were not in poverty even just five years ago because of natural disaster or because agriculture has dried up uh, because of drought or because of flooding, too much water, too little water. It's different everywhere, but that is a factor as to how we design our programming is listening to the needs of the communities in which we work, which starts, you're right, with an emphasis on ending poverty. That is the number one thing that communities, families want to do. But they also, communities even now, see the linkage with the changing weather patterns. Well, ma'am, and I go back to the original, my original statement that you all are paying for a study on the intersection of gender equity and climate conflict. I do not think that that fits into this. I think it's social engineering. I think that you all come in here to these things and you you know your votes and you run the clock and you tell us we'll get back to you on that and I really do it would expect you all to get back to us on these things that we raise and I would like someone in my office talking to me about the intersection of gender equity and climate conflict and I really don't think any of these really promote and demonstrate democratic values I believe they're basically presenting a far-left ideology in some point we'll get to the bottom of this it I, you know, I appreciate your job, and I know you've got a job to give us the runaround, and that's the deal. And you, you all get your check from the taxpayers, but I can assure you not all the taxpayers agree with, with this agenda. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.